Hello guys, what is going on? My name is Keenan Lamb and welcome to my WEX Online Masterclass. I'm a travel and lifestyle filmmaker based here in London. And over the past couple of years, I've created obviously travel and lifestyle content for brands across the world. It's taken me to like a whole load of different countries, which I'm very, very fortunate for. In the next 15 minutes, I'm gonna be giving you guys a shooting masterclass, giving you guys an insight on how I plan and shoot my films, as well as a few BTS scenes from my film Ascend, which you might have seen a couple of videos ago. It was shot completely on the new Lumix S5 mirrorless camera. It has a few features that I think really help it stand out from the competition, especially at its price point, and I can't wait to go over those in the video. The video will start with a planning aspect of the shoot, how to plan and find locations that you kind of never thought existed. And then after that, we're gonna go into a gear segment, what I brought along with me for the trip to the Peak District, and then we'll move on to an on-field section where you can see me shooting and a couple of things I think about when I'm shooting. So let's talk about planning, how to plan a shoot and what goes into it. After Lumix reached out to me to create the S5 Hero video, I knew I had to create something that was visually appealing, but also have it tell a compelling story within the two minutes time limit. Obviously, I could just create something that looked very, very nice, but it wouldn't necessarily keep all the viewers engaged until the end. So I knew I had to put a story behind it to help drive the film. I didn't want to fly anywhere because of the current situation around the world, so I knew the place had to be relatively local. I'd recently gone to the Peak District a couple of weeks before I shot this film and I knew it'd be a perfect place to shoot something. So the first thing to do is actually think about what your film will tell a story about or what it contains. You can actually tell a story about anything, but for me it was a lot easier to tell a story about something I'm passionate about, which is climbing. So a story usually has a few parts, like the introduction where you kind of introduce the character and then the introduction of a problem and then the problem being overcome, which is actually the climax of the film. So for my film Ascend, obviously climbing was the story. The introduction was introducing the climber, Tom. The problem was that he couldn't overcome this climb because it was very, very tricky. And then him overcoming that problem by going to the indoor climbing gym, practicing over and over again, and then putting what he learned in the climbing gym outdoors. And then we can see that by the match cuts that I used in the video. After you plan out your story and kind of like what it's going to contain, the next thing to think about is locations. When thinking about locations, I think it's important that you spend a lot of time researching into the best place for you. One way I love to do this is actually to go on Instagram and find feature pages that feature content from specific locations or countries. So for example, there's Hidden Scotland, and obviously they feature stunning content, but on the swipes, you have details on how to get there, what's around and what to shoot. Then we also have UK shooters, which is something I'm part of, and we feature content from around the UK. After you kind of find a photo that you really like, hit the location tag, and on this location tag, you have a whole wealth of different images of the place, and you can actually see exactly where the place is from the map on the top. One thing I suggest is actually hitting the story part of the location tag, and you can actually see what people have posted in the last 24 hours. So you can actually see what the location looks like, help you decide if this is actually a good location for you to shoot. You could also hit the recent tab and actually shows you photos that have been posted recently, but that might not be as reliable because people could actually have taken the photo like two weeks ago, a month ago, and then posted it recently. So I recommend hitting the story tag and you can actually see a lot more info from there. This is actually a great resource for finding a place that suits your vision. And for me, that was the Peak District. I also went on Google Images and actually just searched the Peak District Roaches. The Roaches is actually a great place where climbers go for climbing. But then on this, on the related images, Ludge Church came up. And this is the scene here. As soon as I saw it, I knew it was a perfect place to film the approach scenes on my video. So we went there and it was absolutely stunning. So let's move on to shot lists. Your shot list should always consist of a variety of focal lengths and angles. With angles, it's important to switch it up because you wouldn't usually see these angles at eye level, which keeps the viewer engaged and interested. Different focal lengths also tell a different story. For example, wide establishing shots, this shows you exactly where you are. 
medium shots that kind of bring you closer to the action and then close ups which bring you even closer and give you that kind of personal intimate feel to the video. So think about what focal lengths you're using as they can all tell a different story. With shot types and styles, sometimes it's hard to think about what shots you actually need. So for that, I suggest watching trailers or films that relate to the video you're trying to create. So for me, my video was about climbing, so I watched Free Solo and a couple of trailers for that. And within those, I screenshotted angles and compositions that I really, really liked. So I made sure to try and implement them into my own video. You really want to get creative here and envision how the shoot will plan out. And this is actually such an important step because it helps save time on set as you know exactly what you want to get and avoid overshooting. Don't get me wrong though, I think overshooting is fantastic, but I think you need to get the shots that you really need first and then you can focus on shooting more. So with your shot list, you can actually do this as notes on your phone like me, as the shoot schedule was pretty tight so I didn't have time to draw out a storyboard. However, you can do a storyboard which helps kind of envision it a lot better, but having notes on your phone works just as well. Next, let's talk about the gear that I brought along with me on the trip. Obviously, we've got the Lumix S5 mirrorless camera here. And on the front, I have a 24 to 70 f2.8 lens. The kit lens that comes with this camera is the 20 to 60 f3.5 to 5.6 lens. And I'm not really a big fan of shooting on variable aperture zoom lenses, as when you're zooming in, the lens gets darker, so slower. And I like to keep depth in my images. So it's important to find a lens that suits you. And for me, it was a constant aperture throughout the zoom range. Obviously you've got the Lumix S5 brand new mirrorless camera. And then on top, I've got the Atomos Shinobi monitor and that connects directly to the camera via the HDMI cable. Got a cage on it just to protect it and then a battery to power the monitor. On the bottom, I have a Ronin S base plate. Obviously that connects to the Ronin S gimbal. The Ronin S gimbal is my gimbal of choice. I like it because it's sturdy. It's got three custom modes, which I can easily switch between uh, for different cinematic modes. And also on the side, I've got a side handle uh, for more stability. So when you're using a gimbal, it's important to balance your camera on the gimbal properly. Otherwise the motors can strain and it can actually weaken them over time. So the first thing to do is actually mount your camera onto the plate which is a given. And then the first thing that you want to do is point your camera upwards if you can, and make sure that your camera stays pointing upwards. So right now it's kind of like flopping down, which means it's not balanced on this axis. So first thing to do is move the camera so it doesn't fall. Okay, so as you can see right now, the camera is pointing upwards. And when I kind of like move it, it's not really moving too much. That's because it's almost perfectly balanced on this axis. Next thing you wanna do is balance it this way so the camera wants to stay facing forwards. Right now, as you can see, it's tilting forwards and tilting down, so you move the base plate backwards. Just tiny amounts and make sure that the camera doesn't keep tilting. So now I've locked that in place, as you can see, the camera is facing forwards and it's not moving. If I point it upwards, it should also stop moving as well. Next thing you want to do is balance the roll axis. Um, so as you can see, right now it's actually pretty well balanced, but you'd actually move this one left or right to make sure it doesn't tilt uh, either side. And then the last axis you want to balance is this pan one here, and not that many people know about balancing this axis. So what you want to do is get your gimbal and tilt it about 45 degrees um, to the ground. And what you want is this arm to be parallel to the ground. So right now, as you can see, it's very back heavy and it's tilting this way. So what I want to do is move this forward so the arm stays parallel to the ground. So I've just pushed the plate forwards. And as you can see, when I put the gimbal 45 degrees towards the ground, the arm is now staying parallel. The last thing you wanna do is turn your gimbal on and then auto tune it to make sure that the motors are strengthened to the right strength so they don't overstrain or understrain when they're on. So after auto tuning and the gimbal is on, as you can see, it's balanced perfectly. It's all working. Uh, and that's how you balance a gimbal properly.
So on the Lumix S5, I'm shooting vlog. Um, and when shooting vlog, it's important to expose properly and not have too many like bright highlights and too many cross shadows. So I'm actually using the waveform that's built into the camera. That's custom assigned to this button right here. Uh, and I'm gonna show you guys how to expose that right now. So as you can see, you've got the waveform here, which is telling me how bright the image is. And then at the bottom, we have uh, how dark the image is. When I'm just changing my ND filter, the graph is going down. And as soon as the line starts to like level out and everything starts to bunch up towards it, that's when the highlights are clipping. So as you can see right now, I've got zebras on as well. The sky over here is clipped. And as I bring it down and the graph is now kind of more spread out and not bunching up at the top or bottom, we know we're kind of like at a good exposure. Another tip when using this camera to expose properly is to make sure you set your zebras. So as you can see on the waveform right now, when I bump up the ISO, it kind of tops out at about 95 and it's, this is at 95 IRE. So basically what I've done is set the zebras to about 90%. So when the highlights go above 90%, these zebras will show up, meaning that this part is going to be overexposed. So making sure that when you have no zebras means that you've exposed properly and nothing is overexposed. So the kit lens that comes with the Lumix S5 is a 20 to 60, f3.5 to 5.6. And this lens actually changes aperture as you zoom in. So it gets darker as you zoom in, which isn't handy for when shooting shallow depth of field because the image will be more in focus throughout the focal plane. So right now I'm shooting on a 24 to 70 f2.8. When shooting at f2.8 to get that shallow depth of field, you're letting in a lot more light into the sensor. And rather than bumping the ISO down, it's actually better to have a variable ND filter. This is a five stop ND filter. And as you can see, when I turn it, it gets kind of lighter and darker, lets in less or more light, depending on how you want it. So to compensate for a lower f-stop number, letting in more light, get an ND filter and reduce the amount of light that gets into the lens so you can still shoot with that shallow depth of field. Phone apps are a great tool to add into your filmmaking and photographer's kit to make sure your shoot goes smoothly. For example, Photo Pills is a great app that allows you to pinpoint the exact location of the sun at certain times of the day so you know exactly where it's gonna rise and where it will set. To make sure the sun is actually there, Windy is a great app that shows you real-time weather forecasting so you know exactly where there will be rain forecast or cloud cover during the day that you're shooting. To get that cinematic and filmic look, it's important to change up your angles and movements in your shots. So with angles, get low to the ground or shoot higher up and you can use these leading lines to create a really dynamic image. Another thing to do is actually add movements into your shots. So for example, left and right panning movements, forwards and back tracking, or you could use a gimbal to get very stabilized and controlled shots. But don't always shoot gimbal movements as this can look quite boring and robotic if you shoot it with the whole video. Switch it up, shoot handheld, it implements this raw kind of vibe to your videos and really keeps your viewers engaged. So we're here at the climbing gym for the mid part of the film. And what I'm doing here is shooting at low angles, pointing upwards uh, with a wide lens as possible. This creates a sense of scale. It actually also makes the whole space look a lot bigger than it actually is, giving you this really spacious and atmospheric feel. Another good thing about this camera is that it has a flip screen and a tiltable screen. So when you're shooting at low angles, you can point the screen up and actually see what you're filming rather than having to get your head down low and kind of like in awkward position just to see the screen. Thank you so much for watching this Wex Online Masterclass. I really hope you've learned something from it. I hope it's given you a good insight into how I shoot my videos and what I get up to on my shoots. And if you've learned something, don't forget to tag me in your BTS clips or your videos on Instagram at Keen and Lamb. If you wanna check out a bit more about my work and what I haven't posted on Instagram, hit on my website, www.keenandlamb.com. On there, you can send me an inquiry if you want. Any questions about this video, feel free to hit me up on there. But yeah, once again, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys soon. Take care.